Welcome to MCN. We're at Honda launch at Porto Mayo. Um, it's actually two Hondas we're riding uh, tomorrow. Uh, a new Fireblade here and a CBR 600RR. We're going to talk about the 600RR in a separate video, so have a look out for that one. But um, today we're going to talk all about the 2024 Honda Fireblade. Um, and we're going to be riding it around the track in the e not in the evening, we're in the evening now, tomorrow. Um, we've just had a, a massive technical presentation, so this bike looks pretty similar to before. This was launched in 2020. It kind of represented a new direction for the blade. The blade was always kind of kind of the soft superbike, never really won much, um, but Honda decided to change all that and make it really radical, give it loads of power, um, proper racetrack handling, loads of electronics, so it was a real step change for Honda. Um, it then got revised a little bit in 2022 and now we've got some more revisions so i would say this bike makes 215 bhp no one ever wanted more power out of this thing so it's i think it's done for the race teams all these these changes have made this bike easier to ride um give it more grunt more control by the race teams and what i've done is um sat through a very long presentation um, written some notes down and I'm going to rattle through some of the kind of salient points really. So they're only bringing the SP into the UK and it's going to cost £23,499 which is actually the same as before. I'll come on to some of the rivals later. Um, so it makes 215 brake horsepower, 14,000 RPM. Um, in 2020 when it came out it made 214 and in 2022 215 so it hasn't really changed that much but there's loads of um, modifications that I think are going to make this engine more tunable and really make it sing when it turns into a race bike which is what Honda are desperate to do. They're desperate for this bike to win at racing and it already does in super stock racing in, in England at least Superstock 1000 is dominated by Fireblades, so they must be doing something right. And I think all of these changes are going to be the music to the ears of club racers and Superstock riders, and then hopefully the Superbike teams as well. So the, it's got a higher compression ratio, up uh, from 13.4 to 1 to 13.6 to 1. Um, different intake ports, the more gas flowed, different valve timing. You've got progressive um, oval section valve springs, lighter inlet valves, lighter crankshaft, lighter crankcase, um, lighter con rods, shorter gearbox ratios all the way through the gears, including shorter final drive. So when this first came out, a really long gearing, it would do about a million miles an hour in first gear. It was just ridiculous. They, they, they trimmed that down for the 2022 bike and now it looks like it's going to be even more peppy. Um, and some of those engine changes as well are designed to give it more mid-range as well as being more tunable. Um, the big thing, one of the two big things on this bike, one's in the chassis, we'll come to that, and the other thing is in the engine. So it's now got split throttle bodies. So instead of, um, it's an inline four obviously still. <laughs> um, and four cylinders, it used to have one bank of throttle bodies just fixed and all the butterflies would open at the same time, but now there's two and two. So the other bike that's got it is a BMW and a lot of racing bikes, MotoGP bikes have got it. It allows the, the engine to kind of run on two cylinders sometimes. It allows more progressive throttle openings, more accurate throttle openings. And the way it works on this bike in a nutshell is that when you or close the throttle in the corner. When it's time to open the throttle again, you open the twist grip and just uh, cylinders one and two, the throttle bodies start to open. So you kind of got quite progressive power. And then as you give it more beans, basically, both the throttle butterflies open and you've got full power. So it allows the, the engine just to be much more controllable, hopefully, and we'll find that out tomorrow. And it also allows more um, accurate engine braking control. So again, when you come off the throttle, the uh, three and four throttle butterflies open, but it works in conjunction with the exhaust valve. So depending on how you've got the engine braking set, you can have more engine braking than there's actual natural or less engine braking. So you can fine tune that. 
and then with the, the race kit, which you're allowed to use you know, in club racing or super stock racing, you can refine those openings even more to make it absolutely perfect. In BSB, you probably can't at the moment because they use a control MoTeC um, ECU, but in terms of you know, super stock racers and club racers and track day goers, it's an absolutely fantastic gizmo and, and I've actually used it on my own BMW race bike and it is really good. So we've got on top of that this NCAN, a new Akropovich NCAN which is actually huge, it looks like a rolled up carpet but it's massive, it's a litre bigger and that's helped the mid-range but also it's five decibels quieter than before and I know a lot of people have trouble getting fire blades through uh, noise tests at track days so that would be good. Um, so loads of work in the engine, chassis new frame as well so it's got more flex in the chassis, a lot of the internal bracing has been removed, it's 960 grams lighter, 17% less lateral um, stiffness, 15% less torsional stiffness, it's got lighter engine bolts, the rear wheel spindle goes in a groove now so it's easier to change the, the rear wheel, like that's for racers you're always changing uh, wheels and then is the other big changes to the suspension. So this has got third generation Olin semi-active suspension, which comes on the SP. The normal uh, standard blade doesn't have it, but we're not getting that anyway. Um, and it's more refined as you'd expect. Uh, the damping changes as you ride along. You can change. You can you, you 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 can set it in as many parameters as you want, and you never need a screwdriver. But the the big step forward on this bike is it's got a layout on the dash where you can actually tell the bike how much you weigh and then the the bike will give you a suggested preload setting suggested damping setting so really you should be able, be able to have the perfect setting just for the rider which you can change manually you can change in different riding modes rain mode whatever so that's going to be really really interesting and is they say it's going to rain tomorrow and you know normally i might be uh, throwing my toys out the pram for that reason but i think if you've got suspension that's this adjustable and I think we might be using wets. This, this new suspension might be really, really nice to use. Um, still got cornering ABS, but it's got a third mode now. It's got a track mode, um, or a race mode actually, where the rear ABS is disconnected and the cornering function is disconnected as well. So hopefully, Blaze generally haven't got great brakes, so you know, hopefully that's really improved. Electronics have been evolved, the, the riding modes, the traction control, everything's been refined to take into account all the new engine changes and the gearing changes as well. Um, so it's just a refinement there. And there's a new layout on the dash uh, where the red line starts at 8,000 RPM and goes up to 14,000 RPM, depending on how warm the engine is. So when you first turn it on, it stops you riding it, um, revving it too hard. Riding position is different. This is going to be really, really good because these are tiny, tiny bikes. I struggle to fit on them. I'm six foot tall. So Honda have made the bars 19 mil higher and 23 mil closer to the rider. So that's really good. And the pegs are 16 mil lower as well. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, styling is basically the same, but the midsection of the fairing, it's got new wings. The wings are further forward. They say there's 10% um, less yaw movement which in reality means just less effort to, to get it from side to side. The belly pan's extended back to smooth the airflow over the rear tire. Um, the fuel tank's reshaped just to help the rider grab on a little bit easier. And it's actually 0.4 of a litre bigger. So it's 16.5 litres now. Um, they claim 42 MPG, which is only 153 miles to the tank range. But really, you're not going to buy this bike for touring, are you? Uh, and it just comes in red, white, and blue in the SPs. Loads of accessories available. HRC race kit, which uh, gives you an ECU, wiring harness, head gasket, clutch, quick release rear wheel spindle, and a race exhaust. You've got road accessory packs, a racing pack with frame guards, tank pad, new seat, seat hump, oil filler cap, sprocket protector, uh, wheel rim tape, and a tinted screen, a comfort pack, USB charger, tank bag, and tail pack. Right, that's quite a lot, isn't it? But also, one of the most exciting things is there's going to be a special edition of these, uh, a carbon edition, which has got all carbon bodywork on, including, including the carbon tank uh, cover, so it looks all carbon. Only 300 are going to be made. Um, only 45 are going to be brought into the UK. 
and that's going to cost £26,749. So, and it's one kilo lighter as well, so that, that looks fantastic. Um, and then also, Honda are telling me here that anyone who buys a 24 blade, any of the blades, is going to be a special track day experience they're going to lay on as well in the UK, so keep an eye out for that. Um, and just touching on its rivals really, so the rivals to this bike, you've got to talk about kind of the special ones. So you've got the RSV4 Factory 1100 Aprilia, that's 21 and a bit grand, so that's cheaper. The BMW S1000RR Sport is 18.6, so it's quite cheap, but it's not quite as special, it's not as, as highly equipped, even though the performance is amazing. Um, the other end of the scale, you've got the Panigale V4S with Ducati, 28 grand. Uh, the ZX10RR, which is basically a homologation special for 20, nearly 26, and the Yamaha R1, whose days are numbered, unfortunately, for 24 and a half grand. So there's a lot going on with this Fireblade, and um, you know you wouldn't have thought it'd be worth putting all this effort to upgrading it. But obviously Honda have done it, like I said at the beginning, for racing really. It's very popular with super stock riders, track day riders. You know, you see more and more of these at um, Spanish track days and fancy track days now. So um, I'm really looking forward to riding it in the morning. Um, so we'll check back with you then. And fingers crossed the weather's going to be nice, but I don't think, if it's not, it's not the end of the world, is it? It's still a nice ride around one of the nicest tracks in Europe. So uh, check back with us tomorrow and uh, you get to see this thing in the light and um, hopefully we'll have a good old uh, thrash around the track on it. Okay, so we're going to be riding the Fireblade here at Portomayo. We've actually been here all morning riding the new Honda CBR600RR and you can see all about that in the, another video. Um, the story of today has been the weather really. It's beautifully uh, sunny now but the track has been wet all morning. We've got a few dry patches, we had wets on the CBR600 and we've got wets on the Fireblade. So we're probably going to be riding this in the next hour and a half so I'm just really crossing my fingers that it's going to be dry enough. <laughs> There's a gear in there somewhere. Um, so yeah, this is the first time we've really seen the new blade in, in the flesh. It looks just like the old one, but the way really to, to quickly tell the difference is it's just got these different shaped wings and that mud guard just extends, or the, the belly pan extends back towards the back wheel. Um, and the thing I've been really looking forward to is seeing how cramped this is because before it was easily one of the most cramped thousands and I could barely get on it so let's have a look right it's still it's still no Harley Davidson but that is much better before it was painful the riding position for me but this is this is better it's still got a very small frontal area, real small screen. You could do with like a big screen on this, but you know, this is riding the 600 this morning. It was quite cramped. This is more, this is more my size really. There's more room to move about. And uh, yeah, the, the quality of this is just amazing. You know, that, that's something that's, that's gone through blades from, from 1992. Just, just the finish and the plastics and the way it's screwed together. If you have a look at our MCN online reviews, you'll see that nobody, you know, there's an odd little problem here and there, but given the amount of fire blades that they make, they're ultra reliable as well. So yeah, we're going to um, have a quick bite to eat. Hopefully this sun will stay out. It's quite windy, so hopefully it'll dry the track. And um, we've got two sessions on it, which is a little bit mean, but hopefully it'll give us a bit of a taster to really test those throttle bodies, because that's the really interesting thing about this bike and the, the fancy suspension. So uh, check back soon and uh, we'll get on that boat bike.
So, the track's dry, we've been on slicks, first session on the blade. Joseph, are we allowed to, have you got a bleep machine? I've got, I've got a mute, yeah. <laughs> bleep in hell, that's unbelievable. I'm, I'm actually still shaking, I've just come off the bike. It is a missile. And we've been riding the CBR 600 this morning, so it's gonna feel like a big step up, but oh my word, you can see why fire blades just dominate in uh, British Superstock, and they're so dominant in club racing as well. I mean, you know, what happens at world championship racing is a completely different kettle of fish because the level is so high. But um, it's hard to unscramble my thoughts, to be honest. So, you know, the changes to the engine with 215 brake horsepower, you're not gonna be able to sit there and absolutely pinpoint any advantages. But the shorter gearing, it, it just slices through the gears so quick. hard in the, in the higher gears it's not too long geared in first like it used to be but the the big thing is the uh, the split throttle bodies it, they are amazing they um, they make the bike sound like a world superbike in the corner so the bike basically as soon as you come off the throttle and you've just got a little bit of throttle in the corners the, the bike gurgles it is you know like you hear on the the race bikes And that alone is worth is worth my money. <laughs> you know, it sounds amazing. But what it also does, it just, you know, along with the anti-wheelie, along with the traction control, along with the mapping and all these things to help 215 horsepower be a little bit more controllable. So, you know, around here, I was glad of all the electronics because it's very windy and the bike's taking off on a lot of the, the fast whoops on this track. So it's nice to have a bit of um, help there. And literally it's my first session on this bike. And, you know, when you jump on any superbike, even if you're used to it, it's going to scramble your brain. But you know, the split throttle bodies are amazing. I've got no problems with the suspension. We're on um, Pirelli SC2, uh, no, SC3 slicks, which are kind of endurance compound, you know, built to last, built to work in slightly higher track conditions. It's a lot roomier than it used to be, so I don't feel uncomfortable at all. Um, the screen in the frontal area is still a bit small. You know, I'd like a bigger screen or bigger sort of fairing cheeks just to, um, go over my shoulders and everything but that is some machine and I think compared to say the closest is a BMW isn't it the BMW feels a lot more raw this feels a lot more refined and sophisticated and I know that the electronics are kind of a step up on this now compared to a Ducati different kettle of fish really Ducati is a V4 the mapping on that makes them feel very very docile but they're deceptively fast um, but got another session on this hopefully I can unscramble my thoughts a little bit more and have a bit of a something more sensible to say after this one um, so I'm going to get a drink and uh, I'll see you after the last session. Well that was the second and sadly last session on the new Fireblade. I mean super bikes are crazy fast even when you're used to them but uh, that second session I kind of I felt a little bit, little bit more of the boss of the bike rather than it taking me for a ride and I could start to feel his character a little bit more rather than just hanging on for grim death. Um, we changed the bike a little bit for this session, so we had it on the raciest of all the ABS settings. So there's no rear ABS and no corner in ABS function. The braking performance and power is incredible, but there's still a, a little bit of a spongy feel at the lever um, that you kind of get from ABS systems. There's not that kind of solid feel between the lever and the caliper you'd get with a race setup. But performance wise, absolutely no complaints at all. Um, we also put it in its raciest suspension mode. And to be honest, it feels like a racing bike. It feels taut. It's still quite supple. The steering is so light, it just goes exactly where you point it. And um, I just learned something as well. So something I um, got wrong, it's a bit windy here, um, was with regard to the third generation Olin suspension. So they've been talking about the fact that um, you pull up um, the display on the dash, you tell it how heavy you are, and I thought that the preload adjusted itself electronically, but it doesn't. 
all it does is give you a suggested setting for the preload. So the preload is still mechanically adjustable. So on the rear shock, it's down the bottom, just with a, like a spanner. And on the, on the forks, it's still in the normal place with, um, with a big socket. So it hasn't got electronically adjustable preload. But that's the benefit of coming to a launch like this and not grabbing a bike from a dealer or whatever. You, you're with the people that make the bikes. You're with the Olin's technicians who's, who created the suspension. So it's a big kind of data gathering exercise, a learning exercise when you're at these launches. So, I mean, in conclusion, this is an incredible bike. Whether, whether it's a big step up from the old one, it's detail changes. For me, it's easier to ride because it's so much roomier, it's got that much more grunt, all the gearbox ratios make a lot more sense, there's a lot more adjustability. You know, I think, you know, bikes like these for track days are bought by people that do these, you know, big track days in places like this, Portugal and Spain, and I think, you know, you mainly see R1s and BMWs and Panigales, and I think now you've got every right to see Fireblaze because, you know, if you, even if you rewind 10 years to 2014, a Fireblade was nowhere compared to the competition, but now it is, so powerful, so capable, such a dream to ride. I mean, it lacks a bit of specialness compared to some of the European exotic bikes, but to ride, my word, it is just incredible. It looks pretty fast down the straights, isn't it, Joe? Yeah, it's a flash. <laughs> How does it compare to the original Fireblade? What, the 92? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Double the horsepower? Yeah, double the horsepower, probably, nearly. Um, I mean, that was like a sports tourer now compared to this. this this is a pucker race bike. These, these are, these, this is the bike we would have been dreaming about, you know, when the blade come out. This is, this is more than a 500 Grand Prix bike of the day. It's just, it's just unbelievable. So, unfortunately, that's it for now. Hopefully, we'll get to ride this bike again um, under our own steam when we do a group test. It's crying out to be put up against a BMW and a Ducati. It'll be interesting to see how it compares there. Um, but in the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed this video, a little sort of behind the scenes look at uh, our launch at Porto Mayo. Stay tuned for the 600 video as well, which we posted separately. And uh, if you like, if you like and subscribe this video, <laughs> you know what I mean. If, if you like it, like and subscribe and uh, stay tuned for the next ones coming soon. Bleak machine.